The World Taekwondo presents... I've got a hunger, I've got to feed my soul The gates are open, so release the bulls We're gonna bring it home and take them one by one Come down, rise up like the sun. Are you ready to ignite the fire inside? We are legends tonight, tonight. tonight hey, we are legends tonight. A legend is born. Well, hello and a very warm welcome back. It is, of course, Taekwondo time and we are delighted to have you with us once more. We are, of course, here in Rome, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And it's a great spectacle. We have the top athletes gathered for your entertainment. And let's take a little look at the schedule for the competition. Day one, of course, the female under 57s, men's under 58s and indeed men's 68s. Day two, of course, things get a little bit heavier and a little bit harder in terms of the fighting. It is plus 67 kilogram females and indeed the heavyweight men on day two. Up in day three, the under 49s and the minus 80s, always plenty of entertainment. So day number one, of course, on the go. And let's have a little look at the athletes to watch. Anastasia Zolotic, the Olympic champion. She comes in here, of course, as the possible favourite. But talk about a top class trio to go against. Hatidre Kubler, Ulgyun. Of course, the European champion, Jade Jones, well, she needs no introduction, but will be trying to get back to the top of the podium. And a serial medalist on the Grand Prix, Skylar Park, can she have more success here in Rome? So, of course, the one to keep an eye on, they all will be Anastasia Zolotic. She has the skills to pay the bill. She's got the quality headshots and, of course, the athletic resume to match. Tremendous results for her, of course. None so at the Olympic Games, of course, but indeed, all the way through her career, as we can see there, decked out in the USA flag as a junior world champion and of course she's gone on to great success in Moscow taking a bronze medal also had a bronze medal here in Rome but we'll be looking to go one better here at the Roma Grand Prix and of course we caught up with her just before the competition Winning the Olympics at such a young age was kind of fascinating to me too I mean my coach and I kind of game like went over there with the hope to win but we both were kind of surprised when it happened just because COVID, you know, it kind of ruined everything. Like everybody was so ready to fight like a few months after qualifying and to have to wait a year and maybe a little more, it was kind of like nobody knew, you know? So winning was kind of just like, whoa, like to everybody. <laughs> but winning at such a young age, I think like after I'd won, we all Googled to see who the youngest Taekwondo athlete to win a medal was. And it was me by day. And we were like, this is like crazy, blah, blah. And like, we were kind of just fascinated. But the Olympic experience was nothing but like the best experience I've ever had at a Taekwondo event. So I haven't fought for close to a year now since the games because I had some surgeries and I haven't been competing at all. And I just went back to training a month ago. So for me personally, getting back into competition, is just me against me. I'm just trying to get back to where I was or I'm trying to get ready for the world championships. So I kind of took the Olympic title out of my name for the time being just because I kind of want to focus on myself and not trying to please other people and kind of just, you know, worry about where I'm at and getting better as an athlete every time. I love the Grand Prix in Rome. I remember this was my first Grand Prix I ever went to like two and a half years ago maybe when the last one was. And I came here expecting nothing but to have fun because I was my first ever Grand Prix. I was maybe 16 years old and I ended up with a bronze medal. So if we can do better than that, <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh, she most certainly is amazing. That's why she's top of the pile in terms of the rankings, but plenty to watch out for. As we know, Jade Jones, Hattie J. Kubra Ulgun, real contenders in this one. 
and a few more have a look out for Skylar Park as well in terms of the path to Paris. So now we've seen how Anastasia Zolotic does it, youngest by a day, but on their day there's some real top men to watch out for. In terms of who to keep an eye on, well we have plenty of athletes to watch. The victorious Vito De La Chia, the hometown hero, what can he produce against his hero, Jang Chun, one of the top men in the division, of course. Plenty to look out for as well in terms of new European success for Syrian Rave and indeed Jindoubi bringing up the possible ranking points on that path to Paris. Vito De La Chia, of course, needs no introduction to the home faithful here in Rome. Can he produce under the lights on the big occasion here in Rome? A wonderful opportunity for him. This was him this time at the last Rome Grand Prix. What can he produce under the big lights on the big stage here? He's managed to produce, as we know, the Olympic Championship gold medal. He showed his quality and he'll be doing the same here in Italy. Top class venue, of course. Can he produce his top class taekwondo? We had a chance to catch up with him as he shared his thoughts with the World Taekwondo Recap Show. The experience that I had at the Olympic Games in Tokyo was uh, wonderful, the best I ever had in my life. Um, everything was good from the day I was in the village to the day I won the gold medal. So it's, it was like a dream. I want to live it again in Paris 2024. Going to the Grand Prix Series being world number one, I approached this competition as, the, as I did in the last competitions. So without thinking to be the world number one. I have to do just. Uh, I have just to do my job, and um, I try to do my best. I love uh, the fact that I am going to fight in front of my crowd. Uh, I live in Rome since 2019, so I can say that is my house, my second house after Mesagne. Um, I'm so happy. I can't wait to be back on uh, for Italigo and fight. Uh, of course, I want to win gold, and uh, I'm super, super motivated and uh, happy. Yes, my category is really high level. Junjang is one of the best, in my opinion he is the best in the category and uh, is a very tough opponent. Uh, he's a champion and uh, it will be hard to beat of course uh, and I will try to, uh, to do my best to beat him. Well of course he gets to fight in front of the home crowd but he will be going up against the top man as well, Jang Chun, a real danger in the category and likewise as you can see some real contenders to look out for in terms of that path to Paris for those Olympic ranking points. So of course the last category of the day, maybe the best to last, the men's minus 68s, of course always bringing real quality and we get to bring all of that to you. The top man, of course, Bradley Sindon, recent European champion, but of course he's going up against Ulabeg Rashitov, the Olympic champion. What a performer. Likewise, Perez Polo, fresh from that European championship final against Sindon. So there's plenty to look out for in this one. And let's not forget Hakan Rechebar of Turkey, world champion in his own right, and a real problem to anyone that he comes up against. The top man in Tokyo, and it was indeed this man here, Ulabeg Rashitov, the Tashkent Taekwondo star, produced all of the best action at the Olympic Games. We know his dynamic style. How will he adapt to the new rules? Well, we will get to find out, but also we get to find out his thoughts on the competition. И это очень сильно изменило мою жизнь. Можете передать пока что. Да. По чуть-чуть по -чуть будем говорить. So he said that it, it was his dream. So for the Olympics he planned his for whole life. So he, the way was for whole life. So he never uh, forgets uh, these days. На этих соревнованиях мне пришлось драться с, с моим кумиром. Это будет Ли Дайхун из Южной Кореи. Я, когда был молодой, я всегда смотрел на него и восхищался. Я хотел стать таким, как он. И я никогда не думал, что мне когда-нибудь в своей жизни придется драться именно с ним. И так получилось, что на Олимпиаде в Токио мой второй бой был с моим кумиром. Я очень сильно волновался, переживал, но я сам себе сказал внутри, что если я дошел до этого момента, Значит, я тоже достоин победы, значит, я тоже смогу победить. Uh, he says that uh, 
So uh, in the Olympics, he had to fight with his favorite sportsman, with Lee Dae Hoon. And at this moment, uh, he knew that his, his fa well, he, uh, even his uh, uh, Lee Dae Hoon was his favorite uh, sports uh, athlete. Uh, but he saw that he, if 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 he come to this place, he should win him. So, as a is his dream become true. Well, Ulebeg Rashitov talking about taking down Ide Hoon. He is now a marked man himself, up there with Bradley Sindon at the top of the pile. So now you know what's happening on day one. You get to enjoy it all from the comfort of wherever you are. And of course, thanks to our sponsors for all of the kind support that they have provided. But we also need your support. Follow us, of course, the World Taekwondo social media platforms. I'm sure you know them. And indeed, the World Taekwondo recap show as well. We would appreciate a like, a subscribe, or indeed follow us. But of course, following this is match one, day one, and you can sit back and enjoy.